Autobots Transform. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of George Reviews. Today on George Reviews, we'll be taking a look at Transformers Studio Series Scourge from the 1986 movie. He is number five in this wave. The package says Transformers. Uh, Transformers, the movie right there. Score Studio Series, ages 8 and up. Decepticon, um, Takara Tommy right there. Side of the box is an image of Scourge right there. It says Voyager class in multiple languages. The product shot on the back of the box. Um, big screen inspired. Scale detail backdrop on his package. Herald of Unicron also. I don't know if I'm getting that in. Herald of Unicron. And another image of Scourge right there with the 1986 or just 86 right there. Uh, authentic Transformer right there. And yeah, I walk in and I see two Grimlocks on the shelf. I already picked up Grimlock. And I've been looking for this guy for like two or three weeks. After I, um, I just narrowly missed him when I picked up Cyclonus and a couple other uh, Kingdom figures. But uh, I, I was fiending. I was going for the every target every three days. And I finally got a hold of this damn figure. Anyway, here he is. Get him open. And yeah, I'm real excited. I was really looking forward to this one. I really like how he looks. Always been one of my, um, I don't say favorite characters, but um, always been fascinated with his character. Because he was um, an independent creation of Unicron. Here's the little backdrop that comes with the Studio Series guy. It's... Um, the reformat scene when Unicron reformatted Galvatron, Cyclonus, and Scourge. You can see Kickback and Shrapnel right there. And here is Scourge. And Scourge, um, if you don't know, he he was made from the wreckage of Thundercracker, but Thundercracker was dead when he got reformatted. So Scourge is an independent creation of Unicron, not just in body, but in mind and spirit. Of, I'm gonna call it that. Look at all the tie downs. Oh man, he, he really looks great. He really does. I'm really looking forward to this guy. He looks great. I hope I like it as much as I think I am. He comes with a blast effect. It's a weird blast effect. Something like we've never seen. And I don't even know if that's bent or <laughs> supposed to be like that. And he comes with his rifle. Looks sort of reminiscent of the Generation 1 rifle. But yeah, this guy, he looks great. Here he is on his little stand. Let me see if I can get his little back kibble going a little bit better. Put him back up here. And for my money, um, from the photos I've seen it just now in hand, he's the most accurate official version of Scourge to the 1986 movie ever, which isn't that hard to do. Take a look at his face. And we finally get the painted mustache and goatee. He really looks cool. So let's get into the figure. Let me move some of this stuff. Oh, in his package is also his instructions. But we are going to forego that. We're going to freestyle his, his transformation and all of that. But in case you want to see it, here it is. It's done in like purple, black, and white. So let's get Scorch out here. Let's move the backdrop a little bit. Here he is. Let's take a look at that face sculpt. And um, just to uh, start this review, I want to point out to kick off this review. I think his head is a little small, like in comparison to his body and his hands. Like uh, the face actually, like not the entire head, but the face goes in here is a little bit small. I think it's made to accommodate the transformation. But there it is. Um, he has a little bit of blue paint here in the Decepticon logo painted on right there. He has some gray paint in his abdomen on his forearms. This right here is gray plastic. His thighs appear to be painted gray. And the rest is like just all, just all blue plastic. If you turn him around, he's wearing, <laughs> he's wearing the uh, shell of his jet boat mode. <laughs> Or whatever you want to call it, his Luke Speeder mode on his back, which I kind of figured that. But it looks great from the front, look like the little wings going on. Looks amazing. I'm happy to have this figure. Oh man, I'm just, I'm really excited. So 
Anyway, so let's run down Scourge's articulation. We're going to take his head for a spin, get his beard over that little part right there, and then wheel 360. He can look up just a little bit. He can look down a little bit, and he has some side to side, which is cool. Get his arms to rotate. Well, it's a lot of kibble back here. And we can, can we get a three? So we get a 360 out of it. It has a, a hinge at the top of his shoulder get his arm out this far which is cool a little paint detailing in there a little bit of reddish pink he has a bicep swivel a elbow bend right at 90 coming down to his hands 360 and his fingertips are painted the cartoon pink which i love i'm so glad they did it. i'm so glad his fingers don't articulate but they left an open hand like he was always gesturing in the cartoon man that that is great let's take a look at the other one yep Painted fingertips on both sides. Uh, it's crazy that I'm excited for pink fingernails. <laughs> but, uh, man, it's been a long time coming for an official Scourge figure to have this much cartoon accuracy. And where I'm coming to is abdomen. Uh, full 360 kibble spinning around. And his legs. You know, these guys can do the splits. He's not going all the way down because of the kibble on his back. But I think it, you can move it out of the way and get him down and almost to the splits. Coming to his knee joint. Oh, wait. Uh, he has an upper thigh swivel. It's hidden very well up here. And you get a 360. Oh, it's coming off. It's coming off at that joint. Okay, you might not want a 360 all the way around. So, yeah, don't 360 all the way around. Coming to his knee. He can only get... Because of the design here, he can only get the leg up this far to the front, which kind of sucks. Yeah, that sucks. Let me try the other leg. I might have did some damage. Yeah. Not a whole lot to the front. Kind of sucks. And there's nothing at the knee. Just that upper thigh swivel. It's just coming off again. I didn't pop it back on there well. Yeah, there is no boot cut coming down to his foot. Uh, it rocks just a little bit. Not a whole lot of articulation out of this guy. I was expecting a little bit more, but yeah, that's what we got. Let me get this kibble back down here. Yeah, he's rocking all that on his back. <laughs> but he looks amazing from the front. Let's get his blaster out here. This is his gun. And they cleverly try to disguise the hollowing as like pattern and techie bits on the gun. But this is just uh, overcomplicated hollowing. And, but it doesn't look bad. You get it in his hand and he looks good with the blaster. Die Autobots come. And then he also has this weird blast effect. And this, this is really weird. <laughs> uh, I don't think we've ever seen this from Scourge at all or any other Transformer um, looking like this. But I'll take it. I'll take the blast effect. So, yeah, that, that's a thing. And you, if you wanted to, he has ports where you can plug the gun or store the gun. He has a little port right here. Rotate his arm. You can put it right there. And he has a port on the side. You can lay it down. Put it right here. Uh, and like I say, that these little ports are pretty much everywhere on his shoulder. Um, back here, you can store the weapon behind him if you wanted to in his robot mode on either side, either side, either way. <laughs> yeah, so you can do that. I don't know. In this big hole right here? Nope. So, but you can do that with Scourge. So as um, far as articulation with the little wing pieces, in this mode, this thing, this little flap right here moves in and out. I'm pretty sure that's for transformation, but just trying to see what other type of poses we can get him in while he's in his robot mode. You can push him further to the back, which actually looks kind of cool. I don't know how it makes him back heavy. Let me see. Well, he will stand up if you push him further back, but that still looks cool. I love the wings on his back. It looks pretty cool. His Decepticon logo looks like a little bloated. It looks like a little like it's like compact and a little fat. But it's, it's purple and oddly enough, it's trimmed in silver. They gave it a little bit of extra detail. And I really like that. Well, anyway, let's move on to Scourge's transformation. 
Gonna fold up his little stabilizer so the back of his feet, fold up his toes. Um, I'm gonna lock his legs together. I'm gonna drop down his shoulders. And there is a peg right there and a port right there. It's gonna peg that in right there. Same thing on this side, do it again. And now we are going to unhinge this back part, unfold this entire piece right here, and then unfold this part right here. Again, it's like a double accordion. If I can get a grip on it. There we go, get this part out. And what this does, it, it flips back and covers up his face. I'm not getting ahead of myself. Um, open this part up. And this comes over the top of his head like this. Oop. And then there's a some pegs right here, some ports right here. You lock this on to the back of his legs. And we're building a shell former. And you take this right here and cover up his face. I think you cover up his face at this point. The two shell pieces collapse in on Scorch. Wait, oop, gotta get these pieces out. Or it's not gonna work. Uh, unhinge these right here. I know my transformations are all over the place, but uh, collapse this together and there's a tab right here in the middle. You lock that in right there. Fold these pieces closed. Uh, and just, I think, and there's a a little port right here and a hinge right there. And we gotta get that in right here. Same thing on this side. I don't think I got it on the other side. There's the little hinge right there and a little space right here to get this thing in. And float, fold these pieces up. I might even get that on camera. I'm looking at the toy. All right, and I believe we have scores all transformed. Underneath his space boat mode, we got his feet just hanging out right there. But I think this is the completed form, and his panel is popping again. He take a second to pop these panels in real quick. I gave the panels the big squeeze and they are now paneled in and this is what we have probably the most cartoon oh, these little things clap probably the most cartoon accurate scorch hovercraft boat oh, I'm missing some panels huh. all right all right here all right okay now I have it I think maybe mostly that was a pretty simplistic transformation um it's pretty cool I love the way it looks like like this is a little bit of a problem but um, this makes up for it. This looks great. These kind of panels right here are a little odd. They look like they would pop out or double hinge out, but they don't. They just rest in there like that. All right, bring his scourge closer. You can see the Decepticon lo logo is done like on his chest. It has the silver background highlighting it, making it pop a little bit more. But just like on his chest, it looks a little bit stumpy. And right here, it looks stumpy because... The little corners of the Decepticon ears are kind of cut short a little bit, I guess because of the hole being right there. But pulling back, um, this top part is gray paint right here, and the bottom is gray plastic. Hopefully the camera can pick up the difference. Right here, that's gray paint. Other than that, oh, this is gray paint, this is gray paint. But other than that, it's, it's gray plastic here, gray plastic at the bottom, blue plastic, and not a whole lot of paint going on. You got, you got a little hot pink dot right here. And I guess from the robot mode, but you can see the little hot pink dots in there on the sides of his legs. But not a whole lot going on. It's supposed to be simplistic like the cartoon. And it really looks good. I really dig it. I really do. Even though if you turn it over, you can see his legs and hands hanging out. <laughs> if they could have just had one more flap. But, you know, it's cool. I, I still like it. It's still the best looking Cybertronian, Unicronian hovercraft boat Luke speeder mode that we've seen from an official transformer version of scourge period 
You want me to gut Ultra Magnus? Oh, that's the thing. Like, um, let me see. Uh, they don't have it where the, I guess you can have it where the face just hangs out. Cause on the cartoon, a lot of times they were just flying around with their face out, scourging the sweeps. So you can kind of get that if you wanted to. And you could take his weapon and support right here, or you can put it to the side like this. I'm gonna fly around with it and his blast effect. Like you really can't use it as a booster. Because it's like just one booster and it's kind of a weird purple. So I guess it would still have to be like a blast effect. But this is Scourge in his jet boat Luke Skywalker speeder mode. All right, now I'm gonna do a little bit of size comparison. I'm gonna bring out Transformers Kingdom Cyclonus. The warrior and his armada. Cyclonus is a lot bigger than this dude. Like at least in this mode. I guess because this little cone part hinges and unhinges again. But man, these things look great together. Finally, some G1 cartoon accuracy in an official capacity. Man, if this ain't badass, I don't know what it is. Let's just take a look at it it's real quick. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, finally. All right, we'll move him to the side, and I want to bring out his Generation 1 incarnation real quick. Here are the two side by side, and see how big they are next to each other. Pretty comparable. This one is a little bit wider, but this looks so cartoon accurate. It's more rounded. Man, this thing looks great. Really does. I'm going to bring out Earthrise. Star screen because I got him in jet mode already and I was too lazy to transform anybody else. <laughs> For some size comparison. And that jet mode from the Earth style is just a lot more elongated. Pretty much so and I'm going to bring out Siege Thundercracker. Two space Cybertronian Unicronian modes side by side. See how these guys scale. Oh, wait, you can put this blast effect, I think, up here. Sweeps, terminate helmet. They kill Ultra Magnus. Ultra Magnus got killed by the sweeps. Well, technically, he didn't die, but you know what I'm trying to say. Like, the sweeps took out Magnus. <laughs> that was, like, terrible. <laughs> uh, everybody wanted to say he should have got the Matrix instead of Hot Rod, but the sweeps took that guy out. <laughs> Uh, I got love for Magnus, though. I got love for Magnus. Okay, I got Scourge back into his robot mode. And really like, like this guy in both modes. He looks really good. Love the little rounded shoulders. Looks very cartoon accurate. I don't know about this little waist plate right here. That's not very cartoon accurate. But overall, he's a very cartoon accurate looking figure. And I want to continue his size up and run down. I'm going to bring Cyclonus back out transformed into his robot mode and I want to point out that both of these are Voyager class figures this is from the Kingdom line and this is the Studio Series line both of these figures are priced at $29.99 right <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna scoot them over and I'm gonna keep going Voyager class Voyager class Voyager class Kingdom these these two are Kingdom this is Studio Series all priced at $29.99, and I'm going to keep going at that price for $29.99. I'm going to get a hot rod out here if I can fit everybody in the shot. But you got all these figures priced at $29.99. Now, to me, the best buy is Cyclone. It's not just because of size. This is a lot of plastic going on. He transforms pretty much flawlessly in both modes. I mean, this thing is, is pretty much perfect, man. A lot of people complain that the cockpit is reversed and it's not cartoon accurate. I'll get over that. But, but anyway, um, he came out the best. And it just makes you wonder, how, how did we get from this to this? You know, I like to keep it real in my reviews. But um, $29.99, $29.99. I guess you um, guess his accessories, I don't know. But this guy has a light piping. These guys don't. And how did they, how did they decide that? I said it once before in my vi videos. Who gets light piping and who doesn't? I guess it just overall design and breaking up the aesthetic. I don't know, but um, I, I, I just don't know. 
But twenty nine ninety nine, I still I like scores even for even at twenty nine ninety nine. He just isn't the greatest buy as Cyclonus was. And speaking of Cyclonus and scores, I'm bring out the G one version because this guy is a lot shorter than this guy and. I'm going to bring out the G1 side by side and take a look at this scale. And we know G1 scale is all over the place. But in the Generation 1, Scourge is a little bit taller. I mean, not if you count the ears. But as far as their faces go, Scourge's face and shoulders sits up a little bit higher. Significantly higher, not just a little bit. And he's taller. And now here, I don't know if this is accurate. I thought they were always about the same height. Anyway, back to Scourge. And back to the size up and run down. I'm going to bring out Earthrise Thundercracker. See how these guys scale? I'm going to bring out Generation 1 Thundercracker. See how these guys scale? Here's Generation 1 Reissue Anime Galvatron. And here he is with Masterpiece Ultra Magnus. You want me to gut Ultra? You know what? Never mind. All right, to give you my final thoughts on Scourge, I really like this figure. I'm happy I found it. Um, they were putting out a couple cases, and I grabbed two of them. I love this thing. I would have grabbed three of them, but uh, my pockets were kind of hit at the time, so I got two. Like I like to say, I was right at $65 when I got the two, and one more would have put me at 100 bucks. so I kind of like that was enough for toys for, that, for today. But um, you know you got to grab more than one. And, and if he's hard to find, he's going to be hard to find because people are army building with this guy. You know, you get him and then you get two more and you got the sweeps. So you're going to have to deal with that. When people like me come across them, they're um, getting a couple, at least two to three to maybe four, depending on how many sweeps you want. On one episode, they were like sweeps uh, six and seven coming in for a strike. Like, what the hell, six and seven? Like, where do they get more sweeps from? Like, I saw the movie and they only made two two extra ones but uh and i think at one point it was four flying around but um count scourge but uh when that one episode was it call of all primitives and uh they had sweep six and seven coming in for a strike so you got to deal and contend with that and you got people who want to keep them mint in box and then have some open as well so there's that anyway if you can find this figure you should definitely pick him up i want to thank everybody for watching another episode of george reviews the reviews where every toy has a story